Nitrous oxide is a colorless and odorless substance. Nitrous oxide is also known as a laughing gas. If we inhale nitrous oxide, it goes to the brain and shows a euphoric effect. Preparation Nitrous oxide is prepared by heating ammonium nitrate at 250 degrees Celsius. Like oxygen, nitrous oxide is also a colorless, odorless gas, which supports combustion. Mechanism of action Before going to the mechanism of action, we will see the normal mechanism. Usually, a nerve impulse goes to the brain via an MDA receptor. These receptor activates and cause entry of calcium ions. This results in depolarization and excitement of nerves. When we give N2O to the patient, it goes to the alveolar. Then diffuses with blood. And reaches the brain. And acts as an antagonist of NMDA receptor. This makes decreases entry of calcium ions. So, there is no depression and no excitement. This is how nitrous oxide acts. Now we'll see the systemic effects. Cardiovascular system. Nitrous oxide causes direct myocardium depression. This reduces the heartbeat and heart functions. Also, it has sympathetic stimulation. So it acts on sympathetic nerves, the release of adrenaline and noradrenaline, they act on beta-1 receptors, increase heart rate and blood pressure. Therefore, blood pressure and heart rate remain stable. Nitrous oxide increases pulmonary vascular resistance. So, it is contraindicated in pulmonary hypertension patients. Normally the hypertensive patients have increased pressure on the blood vessels by giving nitrous oxide it further increase pulmonary vasoconstriction and increase pressure on the blood vessels. So, it is contraindicated in pulmonary hypertension patients. Respiratory system. Nitrous oxide, increases respiratory rate. Decreases the tidal volume. But, minute ventilation remains the same. Since nitrous oxide has a high solubility in the blood, it rapidly enters the lungs and blood vessels. The entry of nitrous oxide to pulmonary blood vessels is more than nitric oxide to lungs. The rapid entry of nitrous oxide into the lungs decreases air in the lungs. So, the lungs suck the oxygen into the trachea and compensate for the oxygen demand. As the oxygen is sucked into the lungs makes expiration and inspiration rate reduce. So there is a decrease in tidal volume. Though the tidal volume is less and the expiratory rate is more the minute volume of the air is the same. Minute volume, inspired and expired air in one minute. Nitrous oxide inhibits the carotid bodies and hypoxic drive. Normal mechanism of carotid bodies. If oxygen level decreases or carbon dioxide level increases, this can be stimulated by carotid bodies and signals to brain signals to lungs and exhale the carbon dioxide out. Carotid hypoxic drive. This drive is associated or stimulated when there is a loss of normal ventilation response due to hypoxia and an increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Central nervous system. It increases intracranial pressure and cerebral metabolic rate. Provide analgesia. Doesn't affect CSF secretion or absorption. Biotransformation and toxicity of nitrous oxide. If this nitrous oxide is given more than 6 hours it irreversibly oxidizes, cobalt atom of vitamin B12 and causes inhibition of vitamin B12 dependent enzymes. Like, methionine synthetase, thiamidylate synthetase. When nitrous oxide is given more than 6 hours it attach A to this cobalt atom of vitamin B12 and oxidizes. This is an irreversible action. So, it inhibits the action of vitamin B12. The enzymes which needed vitamin B12 are also inhibited. Without vitamin B12, methionine synthetase cannot be synthesized. It affects the tetrahydrofolate which is important for DNA formation. Because of vitamin B12, Deficiency there is no formation of DNA can lead to megaloblastic anemia which can depress the bone marrow. The deficiency of vitamin B12 in nerves leads to peripheral neuropathy. Thymidylate synthetase. Enzyme deficiency also inhibition leads to abnormal DNA formation causes megaloblastic anemia.
In short, inhibition of these enzymes leads to bone marrow depression and cause megaloblastic anemia, peripheral neuropathy, pernicious anemia. Chronic exposure to this nitrous oxide can also lead to spinal degeneration because of vitamin B12 deficiency. Elimination The primary route of volatile anesthetic agents elimination is alveolar ventilation. Disadvantages and contraindications Nitrous oxide is not used during pregnancy because it may be tetragenic during pregnancy. Cause a high incidence of nausea and vomiting. Causes maximum greenhouse effect among anesthetic agents. This causes global warming. Contraindications. This nitrous oxide expands air containing cavity. If air bubbles inside the blood vessels during nitrous oxide presence, this nitrous oxide enters into that air bubble and makes the bubble bigger. This can obstruct blood vessels. Here are some of the conditions where we are not supposed to use nitrous oxide. Concentration effect. The rapid uptake of nitrous oxide into the blood allows more nitrous oxide to come thus shortening the induction time. Nitrous oxide is 20 times more soluble than nitrogen and oxygen. So, the volume of nitrous oxide entering pulmonary capillaries is greater than nitrogen leaving the blood and entering the alveoli. This is due to its high solubility in the blood. The more amount of nitrous oxide in the blood act very fast on the brain. So, the induction time is less. As nitrous oxide has high blood solubility, this increases the concentration of remaining gases. Secondary gas effect. Nitrous oxide not only increases its concentration but also other inhalational agents are known as a second gas effect. Diffusion hypoxia. The rapid diffusion of nitrous oxide from blood to the alveoli dilutes alveolar oxygen leading to hypoxia. When nitrous oxide is stopped, the person breathes at room temperature. The given out nitrous oxide from blood dilutes with alveolar oxygen makes the lungs contain fully nitrous oxide and reduce the amount of oxygen which leads to hypoxia. This is how it dilutes alveolar oxygen. This can be prevented by the administration 100% of oxygen at the end of anesthesia. Okay, friends, that's all about today. I hope you all like this video. If you like this video please click the like button. These likes can motivate me to do more videos. Also, subscribe to this channel for regular updates. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.